Chapter 7 Together Claudia It was amazing to be out of the house. Michael would love this. John was all I needed. And these little surprises like taking me to the art store was so important. Even with the basket in his hand, he looked very handsome. God, he could fit in anywhere, no matter what. It was obvious he didn't think so. John was always calm and cool about everything he did. He smiled at me as I gathered a few more paints. The smell of fresh paint and new paper and glue was sweet to my senses. John picked up a few tubes of paint from the basket to examine them. I found eyes staring over at us again. Girls wondered if he was someone famous. He just had that face like he should be on the cover of magazines. I do? He silently questioned. You do, John Slater. John chuckled. So how do you know which ones are the right ones? He asked regarding the brushes in the basket. I shrugged my shoulders. I just do, I guess. Besides, they're all different sizes. I just get what feels right. Good enough for me. So why do you prefer oil paints? Is it easier to use than acrylic? I gazed at him and smiled. I'm just curious, Miss Bell. Since it's something you enjoy, I want to learn more about it. I grinned. It's easier for me, I admitted. John arched his brow, nodding his head. Some find oil harder to use, he said. I never have. Self-taught? I nodded, smiling as I thought about Rachel's attempt to impress him by learning to paint. John caught the image from my mind. Looks like Rachel is trying to learn the craft to nab you back, John Slater. Miss Bell, it's Mueller. You're going to get me discovered. Does it matter now, John? I took a hold of his arm. I guess not, he said as he kissed my hand. You're right about Rachel, though. It's more than your talented artistic skills that have nabbed me to you, Miss Bell. After getting everything I needed, John paid and we headed back to the car. We pulled out of the parking lot and drove off. No peeking. John reminded me to stay out of his head. I won't. I promise. John grinned as he pulled into the parking lot of a restaurant. He turned off the engine and spun to face me. I thought I'd take you out for dinner as well, since you couldn't meet with dear old dad. But John, the place is full. There's a line outside. There was a small crowd of patrons waiting. In their hands, they carried a buzzer, provided by the restaurant to notify them when their table was ready. Way ahead of you, Miss Bell. I made reservations. We already have a table waiting for us. He lifted his phone, revealing a text from the restaurant notifying us that our table was ready. John smiled and hurried out of the car to help me out. He led me inside. As soon as we came to the front, the hostess showed us to a quiet table in the back of the restaurant. I looked around. There was a tank near the host's station. The tank was filled with lobsters, large and small. Above the tank, there was a sign stating the price for lobster according to weight. There was a shelf with different wines in a perfect view of the patrons eating. Your waiter should be out momentarily, she announced while laying the menus on the table in front of us. Thank you, John said. Enjoy, and happy birthday, miss, she said. I glanced over at John as he took a seat in front of me. Hey, it got us a table quicker. You told them it's my birthday? Close to your birthday, he said. This place is nice. Is this the same restaurant you guys came to? Nah, the other place was more for snobs. Besides, you don't want to run into him there. He frequents those places. He's the biggest snob alive. He joked. I laughed. This place is nice, without the snobs, and far more romantic, Miss Bell. So Michael knew what you planned? Of course, Miss Bell. You think I wouldn't run this by him? I want him to trust me, even though I can't tell him most of what I want to. I grinned. The server was a slender, nerdy-looking girl with blonde hair. She put bread and butter in front of us as she politely stood alongside the table. John looked up. 
She looked flustered when he greeted her with those beautiful green eyes. I wanted to assure her that everyone reacted that way. Can I start you guys with something to drink? She politely asked. John gazed over at me. She likes you. I hadn't noticed. John answered and winked at me. It might work in our favor. He joked. I gave him a cheesy grin and he laughed. The waitress continued to smile. She did not understand about our private mental conversations. What would you like to drink? The waitress asked me. I went quiet. The girl was smiling, but I could see she was nervous, standing there trying not to stare at John. John glanced up when he noticed my nervousness and scanned the room. A few sets of eyes stared over at us. He cleared his throat. His cheeks were glowing. What would you like to drink, Claudia? John prompted. Lemonade. I didn't have a problem speaking our secret way. I grinned. Do you have lemonade? John asked the server. She nervously nodded. Yes, I can get that for you. Lemonade for the lady, and I'll have some hot tea, please. John ordered. He turned to our server who almost dropped her notepad because her hands were trembling so much. The server nodded, taking down the items on her little notepad. Would you like an appetizer? I shook my head. He smiled. Do you know what you want, baby? The girl blinked as she looked over at me. I stared up at her and realized she was one of those that readily broadcast her thoughts. She's so lucky, she wondered. How did she nail such a hottie? I laughed to myself. John was watching me. He was blushing. I'm not sure, John. It was easier to speak to him than the nervous server desperately trying not to ogle my boyfriend. Would you like some more time? The girl asked. I think he knew it wasn't a matter of needing more time. Silently, he asked. Would you like me to order for you, Miss Bell? I nodded back. John smiled. We'd like to order now, if that's all right. John grinned up at our server. John rolled his eyes at me. He must have been eavesdropping on her thoughts through our bond. She was gushing over his looks. Oh, sure, of course, she said, gripping hold of her notepad. Please bring her the fried catfish fillets, he politely said. And the server came closer, leaning over John's side to get his order. A strange feeling came over me. Was I jealous? No reason to be, Miss Bell. John winked back. The color returned to my face, watching how naturally he just did things so much better than others. He seemed to own this place. Own this place? He asked, unfamiliar with the saying. I giggled, causing the waitress to glance over at me quizzically. God, they're so sweet and cute together. Her thoughts interrupted my own. I wish I could have that with Bruce. That asshole can't even remember my birthday. I bet he remembers simple things about her, like what her favorite flower is. Daisies, right? John silently verified. I smiled, nodding back. I'll have the filet mignon, he said to our nervous server. The eight ounce or the ten ounce? She asked. Eight is fine. On hers, would she like a baked potato, soup, or french fries? She asked. John looked over at me. Get her some french fries and make it two instead of four fillets, he said, smiling at me. He knew me so well. What kind of boyfriend would I be if I didn't, Miss Bell? And for you, sir, the fillet comes with two sides, she said, biting her lip. Grilled veggies, mashed potatoes, or baked potato? Grilled veggies and mashed potatoes is fine, thank you, John said. Okay, would you like anything else? She politely asked. John tucked his lip before he very politely said, That'll be all, thanks. The server finished writing down our order as John handed her the menus. She put the notepad in the little pocket of her apron and smiled at John. She didn't spare a glance my way before taking a breath and clumsily backing away. I think that describes me when I'm in your presence, Miss Bell. John grinned. I doubt that, I replied. It was so much easier talking with each other mentally. It was becoming so natural. Everything is so natural with you, baby. 
Could you always speak mentally to anyone? I asked. No, I can honestly say that I never have. I can't without you. What did you do to me, Miss Bell? I can only do it with you. I can hear people's thoughts, too. He said. He wasn't afraid, just curious. I'm not sure, Mr. Slater. I said, observing him from the other end of the table. Does it bother you? No, of course not. It's just different hearing people's intimate thoughts. Now I'm relieved you didn't come with us to dinner. That would have been one awkward dinner. The EEP waves of the watch would have gone crazy. I don't hear it now. I lowered the volume. Can it be read? The watch? I mean, detected by your employers? No. John paused. He wanted to reassure me, but I could tell he hadn't thought about it before. Are you unsure, John Slater? John laughed out loud. I could imagine what it looked like to those around us. We were talking in our heads, but then one of us would have an outburst of laughter. It had to seem strange to outsiders. I like it. I don't care. John reassured me. We look mad, I joked. Another waiter stopped and dropped two glasses of water at our table. He was holding a tray in his other hand with several other drinks. Your drinks will be out in a moment, he informed before walking away. I looked over at John as he took a drink of the water in front of him. He laid his arms on the table and caught me staring at him. What? John asked. He was so clueless about how perfect he was. I just smiled in response. He grinned back beautifully. I wanted to kiss him. Does everyone always behave like this around you? I asked. Like what? He said. I wrinkled a brow at him. John chuckled. Miss Bell, you know I don't get out much. I'm sure you have, I argued. You're not new to all this, Mr. Mueller. John reached for my hand and held it tightly. I glanced around the restaurant. The other patrons were still looking over at us. The servers chatting by the bar continued to glance over at our table. When they noticed me looking, they averted their gaze. All the eyes on us were making me jealous. Hey, John said. He was looking at me from the other end. He leaned forward in his seat. He held my hand tightly and squeezed it. When that still didn't draw my attention fully, he tapped his fingernail on the table. What are you looking at? He asked with the same big grin. He turned, but missed the crew by the bar, because they'd already dispersed. Hey, John said. Ignore them. This is our moment, you and I. He rested his chin on his hand and stared right at me. I looked down. I was nothing until I met you. I was just a creature with no emotion or heart. I love what I've become with you. He softly said with that big grin, God, I loved him. I love you too, baby. I have so much more planned for you, for both of us, once we leave this world behind. He smiled. John, you are just so full of surprises, aren't you? Our server returned with our drinks. She set the hot tea in front of John and the lemonade in front of me. I drank it immediately. I hoped it would cool the red embarrassment on my face. She left, stumbling away. I felt her pain. Thoughts of her boyfriend and longings of John's good looks continued to stir in her mind. It's weird, hearing every single person's thoughts you come across. He mused. I looked over at him, and our eyes met again as he pushed his tea aside. I'm sorry, I said. Sometimes things just come into my mind without much control. At the start of our day, it was hard concentrating and not seeing the things in your head because you didn't want me to. Ah, he said, smiling. Has it always been like that? Pretty much. My mother hated it. I had to practice not doing it. After an incident in elementary school, my dad pulled me out of school and began homeschooling me because of it. I did a few months in private school before I came here to Milton. I didn't know that. So Milton's been the first public school you've attended exclusively since you were a child? Yeah, I answered, taking another drink of lemonade. Wow, John said. 
what happened? I don't remember much, but what I can from my father's scolding was that I almost hurt someone. I let myself get lost in the memory momentarily. It's all right, Miss Bell. You don't have to talk about it if you don't want to. No. It's actually nice to speak to someone. I've been holding back a lot. I smiled over at him as he reached for my hand again. I remember my father scolding me after school. After the incident, I was only five. I clearly and very distinguishingly remember him saying that the bad people would find me if I did things like that again, and they would take me away from him. Bad people? What did he mean? I shrugged my shoulders. I never knew. He would never go into detail. As I got older, he hardly spoke about it. I do remember him and mother talking privately about someone. Not by name, just by reference. It was always, he will be looking for her. He'll discover her. I never knew what that meant, but I got the feeling they knew who he was. John was speechless. Was he trying to figure out my parents? Just absorbing all this information, Miss Bell. Your parents sound a little cruel. John gripped a hold of my hand. You okay? I only smiled back and nodded. I hope you don't think badly of me for saying so. I don't. I often tried to understand them, to downplay their cruelty in harsh words. But you're right. I feel bad for not missing them as much as I should. You think that makes me a bad person? He squeezed my hand. No, it doesn't.